Hi everyone. Hello. Welcome to episode four, is it? Episode four. Wow, episode four of Growth Fridays with myself, Rebecca Moore, and Matt Finchie. <laughs> um, we are pre-recording this one. We're a little bit excited today because um, the pair of us have actually, last, I did actually mention it last week, the Mel Robbins um, Toolkit for Goal Setting. It was a podcast and the other podcast was, um, what's his name? Stephen, Stephen Bartlett. Bartlett. And I listened to both of those and it's so bizarre because it kind of coincided with what we're doing. More so the Mel Robbins one. I love Mel Robbins. Me too. I'm, I'm a, a little fan bit, now. I'm a big fan. So I came across Mel Robbins a few, like a few years ago when I was on my um, self healing, self help journey. And I wasn't a fan of her five or three to one. It just didn't work for me at the time. But my sister sent me her podcast and it, I have been blown away um, <clears throat> and I'm now following her podcast. I'm actually, and I've told Matt this, I'm not a mad, I haven't been a mad fan of podcasts, yeah. have I? No. Um, I'm really into audios, but that's, I think it. they all support one another. Now I have one main goal and that's to get the information or achieve the things that I want in the fast possible route. There are so many celebrities i'd say I'd, I'd call like steve bartlett celebrity yeah um mel robbins a celebrity amanda francis tony robbins celebrity they are all willing to give a lot of information away for free and that's i think crazy. that's we and we're hungry for this stuff aren't we, we? are we're we like, are really we were saying the other day you were like i can't believe this shit's free like it's all out there it's it, like you get the get the print off the toolkit like i know you get everything for free i'm absolutely obsessed so so I have discussed this WhatsApp group that I've got um, and we all share books. Anyway, we were trying to sort of stick to a book. Anyway, we're all all over the show because we find new books and we're all a bit hungry, I think. I've got a few books on the go. I'm just hungry for the stuff. And I love it. However, this, I'm going to keep it simple. Now, I said we were going to move on to um, one of my favourites, which is Amanda Francis the only way that I can kind of describe the difference between Mel Robbins, people like Mel Robbins, is very practical. Amanda Francis is kind of your Gabby Bernstein and your, um, it's very spiritual kind of based. Whereas Mel Robbins, I don't feel she's spiritual based. She might I be don't spiritual. Think so. Not, I, from what I've heard, I thought that she wasn't spiritual. It was more about practical. Just, you know, the basic. Even Steve Bartlett said on his podcast that he doesn't pray anymore. Do you know what I mean? I was really? like, I was quite shocked. But his honest, girlfriend I... is apparently really into yeah. like crystals and everything. So this week, I'm a big fan of the people that are trying to help the nation or the world. Like Steve, that, is that how you pronounce his name, Steve Bartlett? Do you know what? I have no idea. I think it's Steve <laughs> Bartlett. Anyway, he's even got a podcast out that tells you how to be good at podcasts like he's giving everything away he tells you everything so if anybody out there is wanting to do their own podcast he's kind of giving it away um somebody sent it to me because they are very aware that we're doing this podcast um so i'm just going to touch base on what he was um who he was talking to i've actually ordered the guys um and then we're going to go into we're going to really focus on the mel robbins we're setting aside man francis for next week um because the Mel Robbins goal setting kind of coincides with our vision board because from what I've discovered, there's goals and there's dreams. Yes. And so I have here my vision board, which I've started and I've got triathlon. That's a goal. Yeah. And I can define that goal and she helps define it. I've got dreams here, a lot of dreams and that's good. So I kind of feel that I, I'm going to put this on my wall and I kind of feel that I want a goal goal list as well so i might print i off feel like you thing. can turn your vision board into just like as as a whole thing instead of like this is 2024 this is what i'm doing yeah this is like you've got your triathlon which is your 2024 do main you know, focus but you, the thing thing is right though is i think i'm coming away from the 2024 i want my vision to be she said like what's the word she's aspirational right yeah so i don't think i want to put 2024 because that I feel is never going to be done in 2024. That's that's an absolute massive job. This yeah. is my outdoor natural 
pool at natural pond and i've got a lot of stuff that i need to do in the house before i do that but that is a massive dream and it keeps me super motivated and i want to see that i want to see that in the morning when i wake up so i think this is going to develop as we do the studies and do this i'm i think i'm just going to let this flow into its own thing whether it's got goals yeah. and and dreams i i don't know what i'm i just don't know what i'm going to do i don't even know if i'm going to put 2024 on it anymore because <laughs> i looked at yours and i was like i love that i love that you got i think i've gone very specific so i can get away yeah. with it like i am like these are the things that 2024 is going to have in it like i i want that but that's okay if you haven't done it i've gone you're... too big and she does that when we get into the mel robbins things she does mention this but anyway i, I think yeah because you've obviously had a lot of spiritual stuff i think from what i've seen and heard like spiritual make pushes you to to think big yeah whereas mel robbins is more like let's get come on guys yeah. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, get fucking let's realistic. make the goals achievable yeah. i think it's good to have a bit of both so yeah you could maybe make like a spiritual vision board and yeah then like a mel robbins yeah song. the practical kind yeah. of thing but i love her approach and i think all of it works really really well i just want to mention though because i'm super excited about it um where is it it's the did you manage to listen to that this guy i just really enjoyed listening to it so i am now following um i'm into podcasts now because of my sister thanks mel her name's mel as well so i straight away was like oh dear i need to i need to kind of like when i'm doing my makeup maybe listen because i do get bored i get bored of audios and like my brain switches off but there's something very engaging about mel robbins I, I just feel love hearing her voice. Like she's I, like a mate. Isn't she's she? like my mum. Yeah. I'm like, hi, mum. <laughs> yeah, that would make sense because I could be your mum. Yeah. But she's like, for me, she's like a mate that, yeah. that you, you know, she's very, very relatable. I really, really like her. But I, what I love about Amanda Francis is she's fucking far out there. You know, she's like, she, she claims she's about unrealistic goals. And I love that. Like, she's an unrealistic yeah. life. And I love that because life should be amazing and you can have that fuck being real you know like yeah no no that can never happen to me well why not you know this, that's what i like about amanda is like yeah. pushing those boundaries i think it's good to set like practical goals that you can like that you almost are sure that you can achieve just to get you doing that and yeah. then be like i can i can complete my goals but then also push yourself totally have, have like one goal that's like fucking hell i'm gonna go crazy on it totally because the thing is i've had to define the triathlon i couldn't even swim yeah do you know what i mean i'm going i'm doing triathlon i couldn't even swim so i had to start that little practical thing and i i think as we go along this podcast um we will define what my action is going to be in order for me to achieve that yeah i have i have set that goal we can go through that a little bit more but basically um podcasts i've gone and followed diary the ceo i was only like flipping around i know he has the most amazing um guests on but i want i'm looking for specific guests whether it's therapy whether it's like happiness this recent one was um that my sister sent to me was about happiness what's this guy's name i have ordered his book and i think it arrives at the end of um at the end of the month he co-wrote it with i was going to say madonna i don't know why <laughs> Co <laughs> co-wrote <laughs> He co-wrote it with um, Oprah Winfrey. Um, hold on, let me go through. Who's this? Number one happiness expert. If your friends get divorced, so will you. Single friends will keep you single. Obesity is contagious. <laughs> right, so what's this guy? Everyone is constantly looking for happiness, but maybe real happiness can be found where we least expect it. Arthur C. Brooks is a best-selling author of 13 books. Yeah, this is the guy. So I've bought, I've bought his book and he is very, very interesting. Um, Harvard professor and where he teaches the course on leadership, happiness and social entrepreneurship. He is the columnist of the popular weekly How to Build a Life. So that's the book that I bought, How to Build a Life, column at The Atlantic. In this interview, Stephen and Arthur discuss everything from why Arthur studies the science of happiness, the crucial importance of meaning and agency, why society is wrong at saying what causes happiness and why happiness is infectious um so yeah that's the podcast so he was talking about which it coincides with what we're doing about it's not the reaching of the goal it's the the progress and the journey so that's what i got from that and it's so bizarre because these two podcasts i feel arrived on my lap at the perfect time and that's the universe isn't it really we were doing this and i was just like 
this is amazing. I just love love Mel. Like I'm just like obsessed with all of her shit. She is fabulous because she gives you idiot proof instructions. She does. So I liked listening to both of these together. I think the 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 um one with Arthur Seabrooks in He's just a really knowledgeable guy and had some really cool information. Mel Brooks one, loved it. More so, we're probably going to use that. We're, we're going to use that today. So to, in, all, in order to kind of where we're going with this. So she she has one of these on her podcast. It is, um, I did this, a toolkit for goal setting, the Mel Robbins podcast. So we printed these off. I'm showing it to the screen. I'm just holding it up if you're listening on um if you're listening on what's it called? Spotify. Spotify. Right, here we go. So I've printed that off. I'm also gonna show what I've done so far on my vision board. Woo! Nice Love pretty it. picture. Um camping all very there's the triathlon up here, the most important thing, which I feel is a goal. There's my outdoor natural ponds, some shower area camping because I want to tour the UK for more, but I've got more things that I want to do let me put that down there so are Can you I ready to mine? go through this this is mine and we've still Mine's got empty, oh sorry darling that's my um thing but yeah I'm not finished yet but I've got my travel and my car I love the words that you used photography on there a bit of like decorating reading podcasts like just things like that that can make my life enjoyable yeah I love it. I love it. And I still like, I haven't decided because I was going to steal that from you, wasn't I? To put in 2024 on it, but I'm like, I'm not sure. So I might have a goals one. I like pretty pictures though. They're very yeah. inspiring. So you want to be inspired by a vision board. Yeah. And I'm very inspired by my vision board. I love it. Anyway. Okay. Are we ready? Oh yeah. We've still got, we've still got this on the go. The one thing. It's a very good book. And she is coming so give her a little follow she's coming soon she's coming soon because i'm i love her absolutely love her but yeah we've been this works better doesn't it this works with what we're doing at the moment just have a little sip keep it's it very hydrated i've got a lot of drinks here today we've i've got, got a lot i've got coconut water i've got herbal tea i've got a stanley cup I've got a stanley cup to keep hydrated i've got what's that it was espresso. Oh. I've had my espresso. We both did our lavender yep. sniffing. Lavender oil is apparently meant to be very good for manifestation. Very good. That is a good one. Right. Ready? Ready. Okay. But I haven't actually done any of it. I've done it all. But the, this is the first time that I've done the homework. Well done and you haven't doing the homework. That's the thing. If I am excited by something, which immediately I was because it, it was exactly what we were doing... And Mel Robbins is very engaging. She's very engaging, and guess she is. And I've, I've never bought any of her courses. Nothing, and she's giving this stuff away for free. She's giving it away for free. Let me say that again. She is giving it away for free. You know, all these people like Steve Bartlett herself, Tony. Oh yeah, did I say the podcast that I was following? Uh, so I'm following Dara this year, uh, uh, Mel Robbins now, her podcast, Amanda Francis's, po Amanda Francis's podcast and Tony Robbins. And I feel like that, that is in order of importance now because I feel like Dara the CEO and Mel Robbins, they're amazing. What they're, what, the, how they're, they're ch they could change the world. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They can. One podcast at a time. Okay. So here we go, page two. I don't know if you want to do this with us. You could print it off. It's free on her website. So I sat there with the podcast going through the questions as I went. But I think it's brilliant because this is how I learn really well. If I've got like a study where I have to answer questions and listen to the podcast, it goes in because I'm like, yeah. I can't remember that. Because I cool. Excuse me. I listened to the podcast and I was like, I can't remember any of these questions. So I go for it again. <laughs> so ready to set the right goals this year. I got you, listen to a toolkit for goal setting on Mel Robbins' podcast and follow these steps with me. Don't worry about getting answers right. This is just a resource for you to go deeper into the podcast. So, okay. So she's got her first question. So we listen to the podcast. Her first question is, let's begin with the basics. In the podcast, I shared, oh, 
I shared Dr. Berkman's new definition of a goal. Write that here. By the way, everything that Mel Robbins says, because she's so up here, is all backed by science and um, what yeah, is it? Research, all stuff. that. Like yeah. she, like she is top dog. She's clearly got a team who get all the like people who love a bit of back. I don't. If I believe in someone and they can tell me anything, I'm gonna believe it. <laughs> But I've got... She's like, yeah, I've got all these studies <laughs> that show that I'm right. Yeah, like, I like that. Because, you Same. know, I can imagine, because she's so high up here, like, take, they'll be like, well, yeah, well, how do you know that? How do you know that? It's like, all right. Here's, I've got the science. Um, so a goal is... Did you write this note? No. Right. A goal is any desired outcome that wouldn't otherwise happen without you doing something. Um, so basically, goals naturally contain resistance. And then she gives examples of a goal. And she's quite funny about this. She's like, she wanted to have six pack abs. She goes, I am not interested in doing the work to have six pack abs. Would I like them to appear naturally? Yeah, I would. So I can't really make them a goal. But her goal was like to do some more gardening, um, to go three months without drinking. Yeah. Um, and she go and she goes through this with her. We do it together, which I kind of like that as well. Um, and then, then um, what else did I write? Yeah, so, yeah, so you like, f to get six pack abs, you've got to go to the gym. So you can't just go, oh, what, I've got to go yeah. and like not do I mean, anything. She's not interested in going to the gym. Yeah. She's like, do you know what? Like, I obviously don't prioritize it enough that I can't, I can't make it an achievable goal. Yeah. And I get that. It's like, there is, you've got, to your goal has got to be a priority in your life. It's got yeah. to be something you've got, you're actually passionate about. Everyone would like six pack. But... And, and willing to put the work in. Yeah. It's that willingness to put the work in, but there's a little, and it scares us a bit, I'd say. Like, it's a little bit of a challenge. Like, my goal, the triathlon, I didn't know how to swim, but I'm yeah. willing to put the work in. I'm willing to know. I'm willing to do it, but I'm not doing it yeah. at the moment. Um. So what's the import, What's the most important element of a goal? And I put, basically, it's doing something. And that that is the right answer. Yeah. The most important element of a goal I think that was right anyway, but let me know if you listen to the podcast, I'm wrong. Let me know. But the, so what's the most important element of goal? The action part. Yeah. Purpose yeah. to it. So um, after listening to my general goals, where I describe the areas of my life that I want to change, it's your turn. In what part of your life? Well, we can come back to that one. What's the most important element of goal? I think it is. I just put doing something. Yeah, I think it's. It doesn't have to be like exactly that. Would be the said, most important. That's is. the most important element, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah, the the fact that you've got to do it, you got to take action. After listening to my very, this is Mel, by the way. After listening to my very general goals, where I describe the area of my life, what I want to change. It's your turn. In what part of your life do you want to inspire change? It's okay to keep these statements general now because you will refine them later. Well, Matt. I've got nothing. So do you know you... what, though? I've got, I do kind of know what my goals are. Yeah. So Write them in there. Okay. I've, I've written mine. I've, so I've, I've kept this very vague on this sheet of paper. So, for example, doing a triathlon this year is really one of my biggest goals. So I've put fitness, completing yep. the triathlon, two, spending more time with my family, and three, better healthy work balance, and I've put take sleep seriously. So those are the kind of things that I'm like, okay, if I was just to sit here and like not go, oh, I want to do the triathlon, what are some goals that I want to achieve in my life? And those are the things that I came up with. I do want to spend more quality time with my family. I want to make sure I have balance and not be like right i'm going to completely obsess about this triathlon that's not a healthy life that's not that's a bit weird and i don't plan on doing that at all also the more effort you spend into one thing everything else falls yeah it's always like you've got to balance everything totally and why would i do that like no i want that's so fundamentally important to my mental health and my life balance is to spend time with my family and my dogs and have that lovely healthy work balance mm -hmm social balance family balance that wheel that i always get from tony robbins that wheel of everything everything's got to be balanced you can't just have 90 percent of all work because other areas are gonna gonna be problematic like relationships um yeah so i kind of put 
I just sat with myself for that one and just maybe if you close your eyes so we can close your eyes and just think in general this that's something that I could say about 2024 is in general what would I like to what would I like to do and I think that always comes up for me is slowing down and having that free time to do nice things with my mum say spend more time with my nephew my daughter and have that as much as I love because Mel shares this being busy etc she's addicted to being busy maybe I am a little bit as well loading up being careful of not loading to I love achieving yes it's exciting but I do also love being present and slowing down mm -hmm. you know so have have a little moment Matt and see if you've you have got those things nailed for your 2024 I mean I've got I've written three down let's have a share so i've got new car travel and creative time so obviously i want a new car lovely i'm working on that anyway yeah travel like we said last week i've definitely got a block yeah i've noticed that you now do. and i'm gonna make sure that i i don't keep doing that i want i want to go abroad i want to experience the world like while i can yeah. do it so I, i'm gonna budget to make sure that i can do that too yeah and then the last one is creative time yeah. so this is sort of just making sure that I stay creative because I am a creative person. Yeah. I know that when you are creative, you don't always, you're not always doing it. You're sort of in and out of it. Yeah. Um, but I was looking at some pictures last night. I was like, oh shit, like I don't do photography anymore. Mm. And that was something I started last year. Well, yeah. brought back up last year and I've noticed that I've like let that go. Where's your camera? It's in my room in the cupboard Bring it and it's Bring dead. It here. I will. Bring it here because you can snap pictures any fucking time you want at yeah. work. Do you know what I mean? The progress of the house or anything beauty. There's so much beauty around here as well. Yeah. If you're snapping, you're still getting the practice. It might not be the yeah. pictures that you want to spe specify, but it's that practice of repetition, repetition. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'll do that. I need to charge it up and just... That's one thing. It's like just making sure that I'm always doing something creative because being creative is fun. Can I just tell you something? A reminder. Yeah. I'll go back to him. The, the G that's given me my foundation. Tony Robbins says schedule it. I've got really good at scheduling it. When you schedule something in your diary, it's going to happen. You could block that time. Basically, going back to what a goal is, you're willing to do the work to make it happen as well. So what the next question is on page three of her... Um, for goal setting it's on page three what if you don't have any goals and have no idea where to start no problem i offer four powerful science back tips to help you identify what's important to you write those here so yes i did find them out using their podcast well done. um first number one was it had to be aligned with your dreams the second one was think you had to think about your own death what I know. I think what I might do is I might open up this section and we can relate back to this. The third one was the goals has to be in touch deeply and personally and you have to be willing to do the work. And the fourth one was talk in the third person perspective. Like, oh, so, yeah, I remember hearing so she, that one. Yeah, she gave an example like Mel doesn't want six pack abs because Mel <laughs> isn't willing to do the work. And then she goes, but Mel would like to spend more time in her garden. So I've actually got this. I've saved the time on it. I'm just going to listen to this with, with Matt so as we can probably go just dissect it a little bit more, this section, aligned with dreams, right? So it was, the death bit was at 1454. <laughs> so let me go over to this. Where is it? Da, da, da. Here it is. Play again. And are really aligned with your dreams and if you straight on it well done that is ridiculous i literally got it straight on it right let's go i right. love that you've written the time stamps i know and if you can't come up with any goals that really inspire you this is going to sound counterintuitive but i want to invite you to think even bigger if you allow yourself to start dreaming again you and i can then use the research to scale that big awesome dream of yours back and turn it into sp can i just say something yeah okay. that's kind of like when you made me close my eyes and yeah you were like what if you had 35 million exactly what would you do that is like so i'm your scaling dreams. yours up you're, you're scaling mine back i gotta scale my dreams back <laughs> you're scaling yours up this is so funny yeah. but sh this is exactly it that was good wasn't it great yeah. practice that yeah. one
because you really get in touch with what you want and as she says allow yourself to dream again i think as we've got older we've got can get more jaded so i met this really this guy once and it was like really weird yeah because like it actually freaks me out a bit he had the same birthday as me oh. and like he was like proper like dump him in, <laughs> he was like connected like he was like kind of spiritual-ish yeah and he was sat me down and he was like are you a dreamer and i was like i, f- I think so he was like, do you like <laughs> do you like to dream big about how your life's gonna be and everything and i was like yeah i do i want to i want to dream i love love doing that like i like thinking about what i can achieve and he was like well stop dreaming because it's not going to come true and i was like fucking hell fuck he went really deep i can't remember what he said but i like turned off and then i was like i'm going now that's nice but it made me freaked out because he was like had the same birthday as me it was yeah. so weird, but yeah, in the bin, mate. Yeah, in the I was bin. Like, yeah, we, it's like, oh, I could, I could get behind this. I, I like woo woo. I love it. So I'm just sniffing the fucking lavender oil. I love it. This meant to open up your brain. <laughs> I use it to go to sleep as well. <laughs> um. Anyway, sorry about that. Right, let's continue. All achievable goals. This is based in research, and so I invite you. If you don't know what you want, allow yourself to dream big again. And then we'll get into the research about how to make that big dream a smaller goal. Now, if you're sitting there going, but Mel, like, I don't have goals. And now you're talking about dreams. I don't even know what those are either. I got you covered there, too. Mm. Did an episode a couple weeks ago. The title is called Your Dreams Are Not a Joke. Right. I'm going to be listening to that. Your dreams are not a joke. Okay, I will be listening to that as I'm doing my makeup at some stage. Anyway. And I will put a link to that episode in the resources to make it easy for you, okay? Don't worry, Mel, we'll find it. <laughs> Let's move on to We're the stalkers now. I have based on research to help you identify what your goals are. This one, a little morbid, but it works. If you don't know where to start, like the real end, your death. When you think about the fact that at some point, this amazing thing called life comes to an end, what do you want to have achieved in your life? When you think about it in reverse, trust me, you're not going to wish that you spent more days at work. You're going to wish that you spent more time outside or more time with family. You're going to wish that you did pick up the guitar. You're going to wish that you did take on some of the goals that are buried deep within your heart. And so... Honestly, she is really, really right. And I think that is why I've made some decisions that I've made last year. I chose to retire from the industry um, because I just wanted to spend more time at home. I wanted to be with my family. I wanted to be with my dogs. Um, And I think I had started thinking about... (laughs) death and that is morbid but it's true if we take that for granted and our lives for granted life's just going to become about paying bills and getting through the day that we oh what's it um that guy he's like every day you got to find a little pocket of joy mm. um he's the guy that does the candles mum loves him oh uh, richard e. richard grant. e grant he's so he his part his wife passed away and obviously there were totally in love but he shared like i get this information from my mum that um he shares lovely little um he's very positive and i think that's lovely i think when somebody's lost somebody and they can still maintain a positive outlook on life i think that's really important because life has to go on and people like he's obviously got kids or what have you or animals and they all still love him and they need him so life has to continue so yeah back to her even though thinking about death, apparently, apparently this is not backed by science, but apparently it's what monks do in the morning when they um, wake up in the morning. They think about, they contemplate death. I think I read that in that book. It's called um, The Monk That Sold His Ferrari, possibly. Oh. Maybe it's something like that. Yeah, not backed by science. It's just me <laughs> having a like brain fart. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll play that again. You truly feel stuck think about your own death research shows that it prompts you to get in touch with what matters to you now if that doesn't float your boat you can also just get quiet and this is based in powerful research mindful individuals 
are way better at setting the right goals for themselves. And I personally believe that one of the reasons why is that when you have a mindfulness practice, whether it's a meditation practice or heck, just get out in the woods for a walk. Have you noticed that if you ever take a long walk on a beach, that by the end of that 30 minute stroll, you've worked out a lot of your problems in life? Yes, I agree with her. A mindfulness practice, but not only that, having the dogs, I always make sure that when I go on the walk, I've got I have got no um, no earphones on, no distractions. I don't take my phone. So I can have that mindfulness time. Now, Matt has to sometimes do the dog walk. And what would you say? Do you, you know, it's, it's like in that dog walk, what I've tried to do is be present and just yeah. relax and put one foot in front of the other and just be there rather than going, right, I've got to get back. I've got to do this. Always being present. I do that when I'm in my, doing my massages get my massages is try and be present during that massage yeah. so a mindfulness practice is has been huge for me that's also i feel really helps me with my adhd as well um that stillness really practicing stillness so she's right so that is on the second one thinking about death still with the mind- mindfulness one time i took my headphones out for a walk dog, one of the dog walks and i just didn't like it i was just like i feel weird like i also didn't like that i couldn't hear what was going on around me i think it made me a bit anxious because i was like i'm not as aware of Mm. my surroundings but i just like the quiet when i go on a walk it's just so nice to just hear like the birds and just like pure nothing yeah i mean do you know what's a weird thing right and i know this going off topic a little bit when i go for a run i've got to make it this big old hoo-ha that i need the i need the vest and i need to put my phone in and i need to have the earphones i need to and I swear I'm just procrastinating. I could just put a bloody sports bra on, some clothes, my trainers, and get out there. That's all I need to do. Yeah. I'm always complicating my life <laughs> because I'm trying to avoid the thing that I'm supposed to be doing. Always. Right. Ready? If because you've gotten quiet. If you get quiet, you can hear the most important sound in the world. And that's your own voice. And that matters when it comes to goal setting because the best goals are those goals that are personally relevant, meaningful, and enjoyable to you. Researchers have a term for this. They call goals that are personal to you self-concordant goals or want-to goals. This comes from researchers at Carleton University. Getting in touch with yourself helps you set these kind of concordant goals. They are not goals that you feel pressure to do out of obligation. I think we've all taken on those goals, right? Where you're like, all right, everybody's getting in shape. Oh, everybody's doing Whole30. Oh, everybody's doing this. Guess I better do that too. Those kind of goals don't work because you're not interested in those goals. I'm going to give you an example from my own life. So when I was a little bit younger, I'm 54, I used to look at women who could wear a bathing suit and they could rock it with six pack abs. And I always thought to myself, oh my God, Mel, you need six pack abs. Woman, you gotta get to the gym. You gotta cut out the carbs. You gotta start doing all kinds of squats and crunches and all that stuff. You gotta get those abs, woman. You wanna know the truth? I don't have any interest in doing the work to have six pack abs. Six pack abs are things that I admire in other people. Yeah. They require a level of discipline in your life that I am not interested in. So that goal of six pack abs, that's not a self concordant goal for me. Would I like them to magically appear? Of course I would, but I don't want to do the work to get it. A goal is something that is not just going to happen on its own. And you and I are friends and we can be honest with one another. Six pack abs are not just going to show up on your body like an Amazon package does on your doorstep. Unless you have a tummy you tuck. You have to do something, and I'm very <laughs> well. Yeah, you have to go and have an operation. Yeah. I want to do what you got to do in order to achieve that goal, and so I'd never set that goal. And so, please, do not set goals that you feel pressured to, you know, set. Do not set goals that, oh, that'd be nice. Oh, I'd like that to magically happen, like some unicorn flying through the air. Do not do that to yourself. You want goals that are in touch with something deeply personal to you. That means you're willing 
to do the work to make it happen. And you feel personally invested in that work because it's tied to you. Willing to do the work and personally invested goals. That's it. So she's put goals are in touch. You're in touch with them deeply and personally and willing to do the work. Okay, that's that's number three. You personally. And here's another really interesting little hack that helps you continue to identify what your goals might be. And this is about as weird, honestly, this is number four. as the tip about thinking about your own funeral. You're going to talk in the third person. Yeah, talking Don't in... Don't do this in public. Talk, talk <laughs> in the third in person. <laughs> because people will think you've got a screw loose. I love this example, but she what does. what you want to do when you're trying to identify goals for real is use the third person perspective. And this comes from research at Cornell. When you talk in the third person, it helps you crystallize we'll have to and achieve this. personal goals better. So we'll listen to this and then we've got to both decide our thing and talk out loud okay. together. Because she, at the end of that, she says, right, now your turn. We could actually so help each I'm other because gonna... I could do yours for yes. you and you could do mine. Yeah, so we can write, write it down. Right. I'll give you an example of this. Mel doesn't want six pack abs because mel <laughs> doesn't want to do the work to make them happen she is but nice. mel would really love to spend more time gardening you know what else mel would love to do mel would love to see what life feels like if she stopped drinking for several months and i can think of another thing that my friend mel would just really love to achieve in her life mel would love to achieve the goal of having a rock solid journaling routine that's an example of how you use this research and honestly it's kind of weird when you use it it's very powerful when you use the third person it's almost like you're talking about another person and from the objective standpoint it feels like mel has a flower garden and she journals every morning and she didn't drink for several months now i want to turn it back to you for real I want you to take a minute. I want you to think about the goal that you've been writing down or thinking about as you and I have been talking. And for real, use the third person. Let's Cornell this sucker. Let's use the third person. And I want you to test this out and see if your goal feels right to you when you use this research. Go ahead. I'll wait. Should we do a couple each? Go through this. So I, I'll, do you want to start or should I start? um you start okay i'm gonna do a few i might even come back so so i've just taken i was writing down what she said and they sounded really co cool so i've written down some other bits as well so i was like i was just gonna go rebecca would love to have more time to spend with her family and rebecca would love to um would really love to achieve finishing a triathlon Rebecca would also love to incorporate yoga in her morning practice. Rebecca, this is, so this is getting out oh of hand God. now. <laughs> we should do yoga in the mornings together. Defo. Do you know what? Mum actually wants to start doing yoga. And I thought maybe we could... I was thinking about it the other day, thinking of making the top floor like a meditation yoga room. But, that would be sick. But I think we'll just you know because i'll start painting the bloody thing we're going to have it renovated anyway yeah so we could just do it down here but we definitely could do, do a bit, bit of a yoga practice yeah, yeah. definitely i think definitely some yoga because i need to be a bit more supple but that all ties in with this i think you've got to be fit and healthy to probably to do a triathlon so rebecca would like to take her sleep a bit more seriously <laughs> um rebecca would like to learn how to pump her tires up so she does not get stuck i showed my friend last night how to pump her tires up at tesco's did you do you know yeah. what i've really got to do this this has actually this is a big this surrounds a big fear of mine about getting stuck because when i used to live in windsor if my part tire went flat a i'd either be out with the, with the club and a guy would do it for me very ridiculously sexist of me but it was just like yeah i don't want to do it i'm gonna get someone else to do it but also now or oh, i'd find an uber to come pick me up and just get in the car do you know what i mean there was always service everywhere here that ain't happening mm -hmm. if you haven't there's no service so i need to be self-sufficient especially if i was doing a triathlon and my tire got flat 
I'm sure I've got to pump that damn thing up myself. Do you know what I mean? So I think that has to be one of my important goals. Yeah. Rebecca would really love to know how to change her tire without having to depend on anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I've sent I've sent an incense off it's like smoking everywhere. I was just freestyling there with loads of them and it all it all kind of ties in with like this health health of journey. You know, it's just all tied in. Like I've I've got to have energy to do all these things, like and get my sleep. Okay, your turn. Um Matt would love to work on his creative side by doing fun hobbies he enjoys, such as continuing photography decorating and mixed media art uh, matt would love to make time to travel abroad but also explore the uk that's what i've got so far i don't want to use the car one because i feel like i just know that i'm doing that like, yeah I, i'm just like that is happening yeah nothing is going to stop me yeah I'm, I'm already working towards that goal i feel like i'm it's like a goal that hasn't been achieved until i buy it but mm. i'm doing everything i can to, to achieve it so it's happening it fucking is so I've got just one more actually like I have actually got this on my vision board and I guess I just need to I would really really love to travel around the UK more but with the dogs and my mum I feel that we'd need a camper van and Rebecca would really love to um I don't know really like I've got a lot of things that need doing and camper vans aren't cheap are they really you could start off by literally just being like Rebecca's gonna go to a dealership and look at camper vans yeah or how about this? Before I get the camper van, maybe just go out in the car. Because <laughs> 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 if I, I got the camper van and just fucked it, never used it. I'm oh actually going to do these things. But you know, that is it. Like, it's more attractive, isn't it? Having all this space. <laughs> anyway, so what do you, have you got any more? Um, Matt would like to dedicate more time to his morning routine so that he doesn't rush yeah does everything he needs to do um matt would like to continue to work on his eating to make sure he has breakfast lunch and dinner and snacks and eats healthily which i'm working on yeah i feel like that does take really time good. actually we have been really good i think that does take time so basically for, for myself what i've i have a really good uh you know i work for myself so it makes life a hell of a lot easier I feel that my mindfulness, remember I, I think I've mentioned in one of these podcasts, my old habits used to be either laze in bed because I was too overwhelmed to enter the day and like, oh my God, I got something, no, 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 overwhelm. Or up, right, go running, pound, pound, like intense, da, 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 da. No, I have found my absolute happy medium it is get up and walk dogs. It's that simple. And everything comes into it. The first thing I do, obviously, when I wake up is I pray. I pray straight away. I don't necessarily meditate, but sometimes I do. So what I do is I combine the meditation when I'm going out walking with my dogs. And it's absolutely wonderful. And it's quite frankly changed my life. I hydrate then. Um, and then, you know, and I think it definitely here is a good place to put those practices in. And it's because you've got a bit of a long drive. It's like, and I'm kind of the same too. If I go to bed too late or if I've worked too late, I don't feel great in the morning. Do you know what I mean? One of my bigger go goals, I think, and I think these are, this is something that I really, really need to pay attention to because it's fundamental to life, is my sleep pattern. Yeah. Sleep and the phone. I honestly think that last night I was looking at the phone really late and they're absolutely right. I think these uh, the sisters, the Gavin sisters from the Detox Barn, they were talking about how, I can't, what's the word? I had it in my head all week. It was about the uh, REM and stuff like that about sleep. I might actually listen to a few more podcasts about so sleep. So you should listen to Mel. She actually, the first one I listened to this week, she's got one about um, mornings. I oh, told really? You that, didn't I? Oh. Um, and that one, I found that one like amazing and I've been doing it. It's, That's really good. It's like you call it a millionaire morning. Oh, no. Nice. Or billionaire or something. But I literally love it and I've started following what she... And I've what sort of things it. have you started doing? So... When you wake up, the first thing I do, this might sound a bit intense, but I find it does work, is yeah. count from five. And once once you once you get to one, you get, you're out of the bed. Yeah. So you're like, as soon as you wake up, like five, so four, she does three, that two, one, yeah. get out. Like you yeah. need, to, because if you don't, that's yeah. when it comes for me anyway, that point where it's like, if I don't get out in the next five seconds, I'm going to snooze the alarm and, and drift off again. Mm. Or I'm mm. going to lay there and I'm just going to be like, 
I like I can't keep mm. my eyes awake. I've got to get up. Another thing is don't go on your phone. No, so I've like, stopped do that. Not, I don't do that anymore. Yeah, it's don't it's go on your tush, phone. It's not I don't good, go is on it? my phone until I'm here. Yeah, well or done. Like in the car, like because it's, it up. it's, ter- it's yeah. I find that such a bad habit. Because if you sit there on your phone, that's another. Like I used to think, oh, if I go on my phone when I wake up, it, it will wake me up. But no, that's no, not good. No. Another thing she says is get natural light. Yeah, so that's a good get, one, isn't get it? Get air, get light. Literally, just like your body naturally wants those two things. Yeah like wait when you wake up in the morning when the weather's nice actually go out and bare feet on the lawn that's really good avoid all the dog poo oh yeah (laughs) i'm joking we Uh pick it up so should we move on to the next one yes so now before you start so where are we oh no so we finished the the four of them aligned with dreams think about death Goals in touch with deeply personal and willing to work. Um, and the last one was talking in the third person. Okay, where were we? Now, before you... Sa- She's on another question. Now, she says, now, before you start working on your goals, you have to look at your goals and make sure they have two important elements that come from research out of University of Oregon. If your goals don't have these two elements, you're not going anywhere. Write those here. So basically, the two elements are your why and your how. And generally, when I've done self-development courses or anything like that, it always starts with a why. Your why is your biggest thing. And um, funnily enough, talking about why, this makes me giggle a little bit. So um, when I was listening to that podcast with Steve Bartlett, the guy asked him, he goes, why are you here? He goes, what would you die for? And Steve Bartlett, rightly so, goes, "Um, I would die for my romantic partner. Yeah, because she might be listening. And then he goes, don't think I'd die for my parents. And the guy then goes, would you die for your country? And I I was just like, and then he's like, he's stuttering. I'm thinking, Steve, just fucking lie. You've got millions of people listening in. So I kind of went to my mum. I was like, do you know what? What would I die for? Like, literally, I'd die for my dogs. I'd die for my family. You know, I would run into a house. I don't care whose kids they are. I would run in there and try and save somebody's life. It's my natural instinct. So yes, I'd die for my country. A lot of people are like, I hate England. I hate this. I hate that. If if we were at war and they said, right, we need everybody. I am that person that would go, give me a gun. I am there. I am, I am playing. I would, I would do it. Do you know what I mean? And I was thinking, you know, in some of these things, but, but you know, you don't, I guess you don't know in your tragedy, but I think my instinct would be, I'm not leaving my dogs. I'd rather stay with them than, you know, what's the point? Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you wouldn't leave your child. <laughs> so, um, so that was interesting. So my why, so she's, so there's a lot of why. So in this why, the, connecting it to our goals and that, so it's called, it's, but apparently it's called the will in the way, this, this theory so why why now etc and um so when i relate that to my goal everything i i feel that fitness and health is a longer life we want to live essentially i want to live and i want to live an expansive amazing life i want to have my sight my hearing my limbs i want to literally just do as much as I can before the day I die. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm very, very hungry for life. Um, But not only that, the other thing that I came to about the triathlon was I want to feel free. I love feeling free. And um, I think that's very funny. When you think about values, I think I've got some contradicting values. I think a relationship, I feel that relationships don't, you know, a romantic partner doesn't allow me to feel free. And I've got to change that story. Really? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I was thinking about that because you can have contradicting like values and stuff. Yeah. Um, the other thing was, is your how. So how is this behavior going to unfold and what is the plan? So your why, you want to do it. So my why for all of these things. So what we went through, we went through the sleep stuff. We went through... So I said triathlon, yoga, healthy eating, mindfulness, spending time with my family. Why? That is why is like a quality of life, like a fulfilling, amazing life. It's like it makes me feel whole. Mm -hmm. It, It makes me feel like I'm living my authentic life. And 
I think now this time in my life, I've never felt like I've been living my authentic life. Like I'm so living it. I looked at one of my old mates uh, profiles the other day and as our career, we, the old story was we find a rich man, he's going to look after us. Now, trust me, I don't want that. I never wanted that life for myself. But I had a look and this person has very wealthy person in their life and is literally has every single handbag under the sun, every single like living that life. But to me, and this may be in judgment, I was like, but I would rather get that myself. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to have to kiss someone's ass to get my stuff. And um, which made me think, I'm sat here with my dogs and some days are fucking rough. Like, you know, it's hard with dogs and family, you know, some, there's nothing glamorous about some things in my life. And all I saw in this girl's life was super glam. Like, and but I guess that's part of the internet. And I thought to myself, that's the moment that I said, did you want that, Rebecca? Did you want the rich guy? Did you want to marry a rich guy? And I was like, no, I fucking didn't. I never, I never, ever, ever, I want to be the rich guy. I Like Cher said, I want to be the rich guy. I want to do everything on my terms. I don't want to, I, I think that's my block with a relationship is like, for me, my past relationships, I've always lost something in my life. I have had to sacrifice something of myself or I have lost a part of my spark and I don't want that ever again I want somebody to benefit my life yeah and so when I looked at her life I did make assumptions and that's probably wrong of me but I just thought are you really fucking happy and I just looked at the picture and I just thought I really hope you are really happy because sometimes I absolutely love labels. I love, you know, I've got them here, then, but it's not everything about me. Like I can shop ev everywhere. And sometimes I felt that when I was doing that job, I needed these things to make me happy because there was, I had to spend time with a certain person that I couldn't fucking stand. To be honest, I would have to tra travel companion or whatever. And basically it was a job, you know, and there was this kind of silent thing about, you wanted to find the richest man and they were going to save you. That that has changed now because a lot of girl, a lot of women are basically um, very empowered. Thank you to a lot of these platforms and doing their own thing like myself as well. Um, and I think there's a lot of a lot of help out there for <laughs> there's that old thing. I've had this conversation with my mum. There was this little and I don't so much think for my daughter's generation, but there was a little bit of this story that women would like, you know, oh, we would find a partner and they'd look after us. You know, there was that, but I think that's massively changing. I don't know, that is just my general opinion. Comments, you know, give us your feedback on what you think about that and what I've just said. Um, because in summing up, what I thought was I am absolutely living my authentic life i i knew i had to make some changes i left the industry and that industry was very varied of what i did so i did filming i did coach you know all sorts of stuff that i probably can't even talk about on here but i just went i just don't want to fucking do it anymore i've been doing it for 16 years i've had i have had the time of my life but I've changed and I need to do something different. I need to be a bit more fulfilling and I need to do the things that I enjoy now. The kids are growing up. I want to just wake up in the morning and go, I'm happy about the way I'm going to spend my day. I don't have to spend my day with somebody that I don't like just yeah. to get a paycheck. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Does that make sense? You know, so it's like... I don't regret the past at all, but there are bits that I had to do that I didn't like to get where I am today. And I'm sure that is with any any business. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, and I'm kind of grateful for those because it makes you tougher, et cetera, et cetera. But today with, with my mad life, you know, my house isn't fully done up. Would I have wanted to arrive in this house done up as the standard it is? No, because I want the journey to get in there. I want that, as they explain in these podcasts, I want to feel what the feelings are that I achieve that. I want to go, okay, it's not, and then the day that it's all done, you look back and go, fuck me, it's done. I love having the the dogs, right? They're hard work. 
they're such hard work it's insane sometimes and i think why the fuck am i doing this but then i know the change that when you have a dog that you've rescued or whatever and you see the change in that dog and the joy in that dog and the love in that dog it's so rewarding they are so so amazing the companionship that i get from my dogs the pure love is just un freaking real so yes to sum it up i did have a little look over the fence and i was like oh was that what i wanted did i want that life no i want this life i want yeah. this life that i've chosen and it was quite funny it was only the other day actually but um anyway where were we i do like to go off on a bit of a tangent yeah, but we were talking about authentic life and you're living it. I'm living it. So where were we? Oh, my why and our how. This is where we were. Why and our how. How is this behavior going to unfold? So, yeah. So if you got your why. So with your goals, have you got your why and your how? I so, think I do. Yeah, I think I've got... I think you just have a why. All of a sudden... The why is kind of like the passion that mm. drives you to want the goal. Mm. And then the how is like, right, these are these is this is the goal. I know why I want it. Mm. How am I actually gonna make this happen? Mm. And that's kind of that's where you have to put energy in <clears throat> yeah. to complete the goal and figure out how you're gonna do it. And I think the thing is is what you get from this Mel Robbins thing is the it's actually some people go, I wanna do this, but they don't even think about the why and the how. And I and then it will never happen. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think I've thought about a why, and that's like collectively for my life, is my family and my huge motivation. I love providing. I love service and stuff like that. Um, so I kind of have that. So I've kind of thought my my why, my why as well, is because I, I think what I get out of the triathlon as well is like, I'll naturally be fit and healthy anyway to, to live this fulfilling and life. And you learn new skills. Yeah. And you get, like good skills. Life skills. Yeah. Swimming and cycling and running. running. Yeah. yeah. Like crazy shit. <laughs> um, how I have, you know, I've said this to you, haven't I? How? I keep it fucking simple. Put your fucking trainers on. Don't think Literally you need all Literally basic, simple instructions. Yeah. That's like for me camera go home put it on charge yeah that is one thing i can do today to yeah. start a, one of my goals you and don't have to do it you don't have to do it all today you know it's a day at a time thing this day at a time thing that i follow with my program yeah day at a time for this day at a time for everything have we done a little something today to be close to that goal yeah you know um even doing this in itself is technically part like working towards your goal totally she said that didn't she in the podcast yeah. mm. So well done, everyone that's listening. You're working towards your goals. So there are five mistakes. Reach. This is a really interesting bit. There are five mistakes research says we all make when we start working on our goals. Identify these mistakes here and what you can do instead. I absolutely wet myself on mistake number two. Now I'll take you through all five mistakes. So Mel Robbins goes on and she says, mistake number one. You only focused on the how and you forgot the why. So that's a mistake number one. Mistake number two makes me laugh because this was me all over. You set too many goals. <laughs> that's me all over. And, and from that moment when I heard that, I went, I need to talk about this on the, on the podcast because there's me doing this massive dream board going all the way up to space and back and I haven't, she's like just set one to three so i feel that with the triathlon thing i could go okay one to three is like swim bike run i could just do those things but also in this one to three i could go focus on my sleep a little bit more make sure i'm being healthy etc strip back a bit to like the basics yeah getting my sleep looking after myself is all going to be really important for that number three going too big again this is me all over that's a dream and it must be achievable. Oh yeah, hold on. Yeah, it must be a tree. Yeah, going too big. So she's saying there's like a happy medium, just right. Don't go too little. Could like your car, that's too little. Yeah. Don't go too big. Yeah. You gotta find the little, the medium, the yeah, yeah. Um, and the other mistake number four is having goals too general. Yeah. So say for example, I'm gonna get a new car. Mm -hmm. You've got to say what the car is. Yeah, I'm, and what I've date you're gonna get now. it. Yeah. Well done. And the high low range now you talked about the high low range with me today oh, yeah. you explain the high low range because you remember this because he's he mentioned this to me today about the dog walking yeah 
because you said you struggle with like doing it every day I was like why don't you make it a high low range goal which basically means that you say instead of going I'm going to walk the dog seven days a week every, well, every day you say I'm going to walk the dog five to seven days of the week mm. or something like that and it makes it more achievable because I think t- some t- I I one of my problems is burnout I do too much and then I wonder why I'm fucking aching and tired so today like that's why Matt's here is to cover some of the stuff that I need to do so today we had a different plan didn't we but yeah. I was like Matt I need to take the dogs for a walk because I'm absolutely shattered and sometimes I need to slow it because I worked late last night so that was quite a long day and so that's when you made the suggestion of and I think that's a really good idea because the dogs have a really long walk I take them out for a really really long walk and one day last week I think it was a Saturday we they got into bed with me in the morning and we chilled for a bit and that day they didn't have a, a walk they because we've got a massive garden we walk around the garden they were fine because I'd taken them for a walk all week so I don't necessarily have to do this 100% I'm going to achieve this I can do a little less so thanks for that Matt and I knew, knew that you'd remembered that. So I've written some notes on the back. So that's that. Okay. So here we go. Then we go on to, I think we're coming nearly to the end. Note that with mistake four, there is an important question to ask yourself that comes out of research from Columbia University. Did you catch the question? Write it here. So Dr. Heidi Lowison or something, when will you know if you've succeeded? That was the question. Um, so I think she gave an example of when she'd succeeded. When will I have succeeded? As far as I'm concerned, I'll, I will have succeeded when I've gone across the finish line. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Surely. That's when I know I've succeeded. But I am succeeding because I'm having the three elements, I feel. Um, but yeah, so how would you know that you succeeded? When will you know if you succeed? If you succeeded? No, there is an important question to ask yourself that comes out of research from Columbia University. Did you catch that question? That is the question. Now, once you've established your goals, tap into the scientist call the illusionary goal progress. This is interesting. And start with a super simple first step. I give you a couple of suggestions in this episode, but what will your first step be? She called it incremental illusion. So my first steps would be start jogging, up my swimming and get on my bike and cycle a bit. But also I would like to learn to pump tires up. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like it depends. Success depends on the goal. Yeah. Like once if i bought a car it's like obviously yeah when i bought the car it's like success you've completed the goal Mm. but i also think that success isn't like a finish line sometimes yeah i think just being in a state of success does that make sense a state of success where your mind is just like you're powerful and you're like i've got this Mm. i'm successful yeah so i would say it's both of those things that's what's good about this podcast mixed with that one with steve barlett because he mentions about no it's not it's not that reaching the goal that's the exciting bit. It's the journey. It's the progress. It just so, keeps you busy and like excited about the future, I think. Yeah. Do you know what? I think that's what she was saying. It's like goals are... I've put this down here somewhere, what she explained. And I loved what she said. She went on about 81% of people who um, bailed on their resolutions. Um, not many people stick to their New Year's resolution. She mentioned that. Um, and she had read... She clearly says she's read the research about goals and she said ba- having goals goals matter and the re- research says one they make us happier two they suppress negative emotions three they can even suppress feelings of fear and depression mm-hmm. how cool is that um and they give us purpose meaning and being up to something she said which didn't make sense to me <laughs> she said these are the words that she used. They give you purpose, meaning, and being up to something. I didn't get that at all, but that's what she said. I kept playing it back. Going, Did she say I'm being up to something? Yeah, like, basically meaning, like, you're doing something. Oh, fair like, enough. Like we like that. Busy. I like, yeah, Just I like being, I like, something. I like achieving. I love yeah. it. I've sp- t- spoken to my therapist about this. And I have a lot of people that's just like, why can't you just be? I can just be, but it's in me to achieve. I love it. I enjoy it. I'm passionate about it just fucking let me be when so also she says when we have goals 
and um, it interrupts the day-to-day -day doldrum is something to look forward to. Absolutely. Mm. I think goals are a great idea. Life is harder when you have no goals, she also said. Um, and it excites us. I couldn't agree more. I think I think life's boring without goals, don't yeah. you? I love it. You know, sometimes... Well, it, how, it, you can't really... If you don't have a goal, like, you've got nothing to work towards. Yeah, I... You're just living. Oh, we do do little goals as well. I think to myself sometimes, I wake up, okay, this week I'm going to go to... I'm going to take my mum to cinema, right? I took... Do you know that me and mum went to cinema this week? No. We went to cinema. They got this lovely little cinema called the Abbey, the Abbey something or something like that. It's a really oldie woldie cinema. It's dead cute. And we booked to go and see Poor Things. Mum's like, it's off the wall. Everyone's like, it's totally off the wall. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Mm. But there's a lot of sauciness in it. And me and mum, honestly, is so funny. Emma Stone is brilliant. It's off the wall, but it's so good. It's so good. It's it's a bit Salvador Dali, really, poor things. But it's it's so funny. And me and mum, we were, my mum's super open-minded and dead funny. And we were just like, that was brilliant. It was hysterical. It starts off and you're, you know, when you're with your mum, you're like, okay. And then, but it was just like, there was literally five people in the cinema. I can imagine London's really busy with that kind of show, um, that screening. Barry, I don't really think it's the place that people are going to jump to see that kind of thing. Anyway, the people that did watch it loved it. So we thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, so yeah, I was just talking about setting little goals like this week will be sticking to the meal plan. Defi redefining goals like not buying as much, not having as much food waste and just little weekly goals and yeah. stuff. Now, once you establish your goals, tap into the scientists called illusionary goal process. So, for example, I'm going to get on my bike, start jogging, up my swimming, and then to pump tyres up. So, what does... I don't get it. Illusion What's your goal. first step of your goal? What, what, what you've what, got... What, so to... go home and put the camera on charge? Yes, got oh, you. right, got you. I was like... Yeah, so, so now that you start establishing... Tap into what the scientists called illusionary goal progress and start with a sim what it is is a simple super simple first step is the most important thing yeah the super but making it simple um according to the university of pennsylvania school of medicine when should you start on your goal once you set it and that answer is immediately now <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'm going to go for a right run. Right this second. I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to do a triathlon now. I'm going to run now. home and put the camera on charge <laughs> and then run back and sit down. Now the most, now the most important life-changing part of goals that you have to know, there is something called the arrival fallacy. And you don't want to fall into this into its trap when it comes to the goals you set in your life. After listening to this part of this episode, describe in your own words what this means to you and how you can avoid it. This was the one which tied it all these podcasts together. The happy guy discussed this. Mel discussed this. It's called the arrival fallacy. Once you hit the destination, then I'll be happy. Once, so that's us saying, good. once I've got my car, then I'll be happy. We have to be happy on the way there. No, that's, yeah, I was going to say. And I've put way. here, that's blown my fucking mind. <laughs> that whole thing blew my mind hurt. She's amazing. It's like when you, it's like that thing where you, like, it's like Apple brings out a new phone. Everyone's yeah. like, oh my God, I need the new phone. Yeah. You buy the new phone and then you're like. It's just the same as the last yeah. one. Yeah. Or when, you know, like. I must admit, so Tony Robbins has gone over this. It's like, when you got that, how happy were you? Did it last? So when I bought my house, the happiness has lasted. It's still to this day. And I think that's great. I think that might also, yeah, that. And also because you're working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, as you bought it, it's like, there's it's always something. progress. I think is the secret to a fulfilling life is like the progress. Isn't yeah. It? This is what we're learning. Yeah. Because yeah. I said to somebody the other day, very morbid. I said, the end goal is death. And they were like, they didn't get what I was saying. I was like, yeah, like nothing ever stops. We're never going to go, boom, this is it. But like, boom, yeah, I, I'm really happy in my life. But I love, part of life is just keep growing. If you're not growing, you're dying, you know? Yeah. You've got to just keep growing in little ways. That is just, everything's like moving, spiritual. That's how I see life. That's just my personal opinion. Um, now, write one or th I'm moving on, by the way. I just kind of. Don't take a breath. 
Now write one of the three goals of your own using all the tools you've just learned from this masterclass on goal setting. Yes. So cycle dot times a week. Fix my bike might be a good fucking start. Fix my bike. I don't want to go out in the cold though. <laughs> Run three times a week or jog at least or put some into my training. And I want to up my swim. I'm, I'm swimming. The swimming is most important because I didn't know how to swim and that's going really, really well. But yeah, we could keep coming back to this and be like, I like setting little teeny goals like today. Um, what am I going to do today? I'm going to eat healthy today, take dogs for a walk and do the bits that I've put on the whiteboard. I like little goals and big goals. She's put, congratulations, you've already started working on your goals just by completing this exercise. Now you've got the framework to continue setting the best and most effective goals for 2023 and beyond. 2024, I, oh yeah. 2023 and beyond, yeah. I can't wait to hear what you're doing. Tag me on social media, Mel Robbins. We should definitely tag her. Thank you, Mel Robbins. Thank you're you. an absolute effing ledge helping us mere mortals achieve our dreams stay tuned for the next masterclass in the series where i teach you about the three important parts of new habits oh yes i will be listening to that so we've got our two two faves we've got combining mel robbins with manda francis i think i'm gonna like this is gonna be awesome this is gonna be an awesome like yeah. relationship this is the practical meets the the woohoo yeah <laughs> Uh, great so that's awesome so here we are let's get well let's check out our vision boards so i feel like so what i've got here i've started i've got some beautiful images here i've got the triathlon here um i've got the progress of my house there's some big parts of my house which is the garden um i want a natural swimming pool um, we have a massive pond at the moment and it's really, really mucky. I want to clear it out, be able to have like um, lots of nature, etc., in there. And it just looked really nice and maybe have um, some of the cold plunge and the sauna stuff for health and wellness. Um, I've also got the top here. I've put, I found a thing that said survival of the fittest. I quite like that aggressive attitude <laughs> towards <laughs> the triathlon. It is survival of the fittest. I, um, yeah, I just kind of want to achieve it. I can be humble in that essence. I can go, okay, yeah, I just want to just want to do it. Just want to finish the triathlon. <laughs> And I've got surfboards. I've got some stickers here. So I'm, I'm really, I'm still creating. I am going to, I've got this. What I want to do today is, I've got some lovely interiors there. I've got um, this yoga book. And I am going to cut out some bits. So as if I wake up in the morning, I see the word yoga. I might just roll onto my mat and do it. Yes. I might do. So I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to already deface this. Where are you up to, Matt? I am going to start with my creativity area and I'm going to get some pictures of like... Hmm, should I put like a picture of a camera on it? Should yeah. So you've put, it's got to resonate. You've got to really be inspired. Like yeah. what images do you want to... What images do you want to create? Yeah. Like I put some of my... When it comes to images, I put some of my favourite photographers. Yeah. Like is it La Chapelle? Oh, I love his work. He's like amazing. Good idea. Amazing. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I think it was a lot of fun. I've, if you, you know, we're kind of tying everything together. I love the Mel Robbins. Um, I really enjoyed listening while I was doing, while I was preparing for doing this, which, which isn't actually finished yet, but this will, will eventually go up on my wall what i am going to probably do this week is do some of my goal setting like just pen and paper about how to how i can what i can do from now to do my triathlon and um yeah next week we are going to be doing this little beauty doing this little beauty and yeah that is everything that is everything isn't it and we're gonna probably have done a bit more i just I, sometimes what i do is i just come along and do a bit more of this because we could probably next week we can go back into the ingle nook because we are very practical yes. here and we can do these and what we i reckon by next week we'd have finished these 
I think so. Because we yeah. can we can finish these. We can finish these best we can. Add to them. Have a little. I'm going to have vision board, and I'm going to have a little goal section. Yeah. For myself, and then I'm going to put it up on my wall. Good idea. Does that sound like a good idea? I might do that too. Yeah, this is I think. More, I think this is not going to be the vision board. This is going to be like the the goal one, and then yeah. I'll do like oh, got you, vision, got you. Vision. Then have a big yeah, got you. Because this is more like I know that I can do all these things. Right. And then I'll so that's good. Like a goal, yeah. Your goal. Another thing. one which is like pushing it really far. Yeah. But some of these things are pushing it for me because I've never done them before. But but also, but it's not like what's good is I've never done one of these. So yeah. this is good. We are now in the flow of going, right, I'm going to do goals or I'm going to do, we're more in that practical and all this stuff, we're putting feeling into this and what they say when it comes to manifestation is it's all about feeling. Yeah. And it's got to like resonate rather than just going, oh, that's a pretty picture. Do you know what I mean? We're learning that side of things. Right. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you to all of our listeners. Um, just to recap, I'm still working through this one because I love this one. Um, I'm going to recap her because i haven't read this in ages but i'm always listening she i've got her courses so i listen to her videos a lot and we're going to do like we're going to do weeks on those until we're bored but i'm basically going to review her courses mm -hmm. with you um because i've got four of her courses which i think you'll get benefit from we've got the money mentality makeover which yeah. is intense We've got um, the holiday one. I've got the, the best year ever, which I'm going to go. That's the first one we're going to do. Um, and that's going to be ace. And what I'll do is during the week, we'd have watched the first video and then I'll go through the questions with you. Yeah. Um, and we'll write notes on that and things like that. But that's going to be really good fun. And I hope you join us. So lots of love. Have an amazing week. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. And of goal setting i hope this has been of use to somebody may you continue to grow 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 and yeah have you got anything if you've done one of these yourself send it to us so we can see yeah i'd love to see everybody i'd love to see what people have done because um yeah i i just like looking at other people yeah it says i can steal like a... your dreams yes <laughs> basically <laughs> i want to see because i think when you share stuff you get inspired from other people's yeah some i or i get as you can tell, I, I just like, I'm always looking, 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 looking what I can. The like, thing is, there is yours. so many different ways to do this. Yeah. Like, we've literally looked at like three things and we're like, fuck. I we've know. Like, what, which one? We sort of picked out of bits. But if you followed like just Mel, your vision board might be different to if you followed Amanda Francis. It's true. Absolutely. It would be probably quite it, different. It's true. The, th the thing is, is we, I feel like we've opened Pandora's box. I feel that there's so much help out there. It's like, yeah got to cipher through what you want yourself and i feel like that's what me and you are doing together sometimes i'm like i don't know what to look at first like yeah. i just got to keep the stuff small i've just got to do what i enjoy i think that's the key if you're enjoying it yeah. you're winning yeah and on that note thank you for joining us we love you and we look forward to hearing your comments on youtube and if you're on Spotify, thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Bye.